Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome at long last to the new campaign series. In today's video, and in the campaign itself, my main goal is to be a little bit more aggressive than usual, a little bit less defensive, and to have specialised vehicles. Normally, all of my vehicles are quite general purpose, but this time I want things to fill a specific niche, and to have a true fleet together. So rather than one monstrous ship, we have multiple all fulfilling their roles together. We already have our drone ships and a couple of planes ready to go, and of course we'll be adding a lot more as the game progresses. So with that, let's launch the quest for Nita. And of course we're going to go on very hard, unless we can do custom settings. Okay, yeah, so one thing I really don't like is this, the damage difficulty. This I am going to go to regular. So how this works is that it increases enemy damage and decreases your damage. I don't like this because it makes weapons feel really weird to use. It makes some weapons seem really good, some really bad, and it's just... In my opinion, it throws the balance of the game off completely. So that's the one thing I never change because I just don't like it. Everything else, combat, supremely challenging. When set to low, the AI will build vehicles you can handle quite easily. At high values, the AI will try to build vehicles that will really challenge you. So it will try to counter you as you continue on. Enemy growth factor is set to 200%, so the enemy will get loads more fleets a lot faster. And everything else is being kept as it is. So, let's launch. Hopefully lots of strong designs and just... Lots of them. It's a pirate's life for me. Feel free to pause the video and read that. Now we can declare war instantly, and I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to be the aggressors, like I said before. So I definitely want to declare war. Now this is F1. I can't quite see how I meant to declare war here. Aha, there we go. Deepwater Guard, declare war. As you can see, we're already getting a load of resource straight away in the right-hand side of all of our stats. So, we can almost instantly build some planes, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's pause the game for a second, though. Let's take a look at the map. Currently, we can't really see anything, so we do need to build a basic satellite just so we can see what's going on. But ultimately, just want to build loads and loads of planes, and let's scrap that little boat. I'll probably end up cannibalizing the base as well. We're not going to use this all that much. Originally, I, I had planned to use this as a proper base to defend it, but since I want to be the aggressor, I, I honestly just don't want to be able to see this ever again after we've built our first vehicles. Building three of the darts straight away, then we'll build two of the bombers, and we'll send them off to attack the enemy. I am considering building a torpedo variant of these vehicles rather than using the cram bombers because I do think that will be a lot of fun. Plus a lot of people really want to see that. I was surprised. Boop. Lovely. Let's make sure their AI is off though before we do anything with them. Oh wait, that's the uh, fortress's AI. Leave that on. Make sure the darts don't start wasting fuel. And ammo. That's the other thing. Wait, will they spawn in with ammo? They should do, right? Or we're going to need to feed them. Either way, put them all in the same thing. And I want all of you to try and have as much ammo as possible. And as much fuel. There we go. Need to make some more fuels. Okay, so we do already have a basic refinery here. Oop, off. But we're probably going to need more. Also, more ammunition production. So the current value of these is just over 7,000 resources. That's because of the ammunition and fuel in them. When they have the empty um, barrels and everything, they're about 5,000. Or something similar to that. But okay, there we are. We could send these three on a bit of a scouting mission, just for the fun of it. You know what? I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Receiving. Moving out. Receiving. Moving out. Receiving. Moving out. And I'll pop you all into the same group as well. A little scout Lifting. wing there. Lifting. Lifting. Moving out. As our planes make their way over here, what we're going to do is build ourselves a little satellite. So, what we're going to do is just put down the antenna. 
put down the dish pieces, and then using a truly high-tech building method, we're going to add balloons to it. <laughs> and through that, we're going to be able to see what's going on. So, air, and we have the switch there, and then the hot air balloons. And that should be enough. Eventually, I will make a proper satellite, which goes into space, but for now, I think this will do. Do I need more dish pieces? I honestly can't remember. It's been so long since I've built one of these, but sure, let's just throw these down anyway, just in case. And off it goes. Lovely. And with that, we can see what's going on. Okay, so we have the new capturing system, so we're going to just grab that straight away. Now, the enemy harvester, I believe, should be somewhere here. Uh, yeah, somewhere like there. And we do want to attack that as soon as possible. Am I going to attack it purely with the darts? You know I might do. Since we are going to be saving up for our bombers, the penguin bombers do cost just over 10,000 each. So we are going to have to be around for a while before we can get that. Well, not that long with the new resource system, but still, it's going to be a while. Then we're going to start uh, attacking their proper reinforcements. Oh. <laughs> well. That's... That's fine. It still works. It still works absolutely fine. Well, turns out I was very wrong. So, the resource harvester is actually right here, and we are going to go right for it. Now, there's a good chance the darts will win this. Although they're not made for this type of fight, the Sinner's Outpost, if I recall, is very frail. It has its AI just in a room on the outside of the craft. It's very easy to take out. Though I think it might have some defense in terms of AI, so we'll see how well the darts can hold up. Now, there is one problem. There is this over here, the airship gantry. Now, the airship gantry, I'm almost certain, has a functional atlas. The atlas is worth ten times more than the darts are and will kill them. It has anti-aircraft weaponry and it will just annihilate the darts one-on-one, -on -one, or 1v3 one in this case. So, if we're lucky, we won't activate that and everything will be fine. Now, of course, it would be fantastic if we could capture the, the Sinner's Outpost. So, let's begin the battle first. So, my rules for capturing are the same as they were in the previous season. I will be capturing vehicles, but only once we have disabled them first in the fight. Since I don't want every single fight to devolve to me jumping off a vehicle, swimming over to a craft, and then spending the entire fight trying to capture it. If we manage to disable it then I will capture it. So if all of its weapons are offline or its AI is dead anyway, I will make an attempt to capture it. Otherwise, I will be leaving it to the fight. That was weird. Okay, well, its cram weaponry is going to be pretty much useless versus us, so that's good. Oh, it has flak. It has flak. Did not expect flak, though. I thought it'd have some anti-aircraft weaponry. For some reason, I just didn't think flak. I thought just kinetic shells or something a bit more generic, but nope. Oh, we are losing little bits here and there, but thankfully the flak seems to be quite weak. I think we are going to win this one quite handily. Yeah, the flak's doing nothing to us. Unless it hits our jets. Come on, take out the gun. I know I said it's doing nothing, but I am seeing bits being chipped off. That's mostly our tails being knocked off. Very low gauge. It goes with the cram gun. Okay, what I'm going to do now is because we are close to potentially disabling the enemy. Whee! Hello. Oh, is the weapon offline? Looks like it is okay. Everyone, you may stop. Yep, all the cram guns are offline. That doesn't seem to be firing. And the AI is in... Splish. One of the rooms. There it is. And instantly back into the water. Okay, I'm used to something being there. I'm just assuming there's something there. It feels weird having just one line here. Just use the minigun to quickly blast through this. Or slowly, one of the two. 
all of my points currently are in Brawler, so I don't end up dying all the time. Maybe I should put some points in Stormtrooper instead. There we go. And... Took a while, but there we go. Battle finished. We now have access to the Sinner's Outpost. Very cool. Just gave it some material storage so that we can get back to work with this thing. So we are now once again harvesting. Do we have enough engine power? Yep, we're all good. Now one thing I've noticed is that I'm actually stuck in prefab mode. And I can't seem to undo it. I also can't seem to place things. Oh, block placement, repair and undo, redo are not allowed on hostile board sections. Oh, okay. So that's because we don't currently own this because it also said about adjacent friendly tiles. Oh, that's cool. So you have to capture things to allow repair and everything else. Okay. I quite like that, actually. Now, turns out, there is a way around this, and yeah, if you really want to place things like material storage, like I just did because I needed material storage to get things running again, if you hold down shift to replace a block rather than just place it, you can do that. <laughs> so, yeah, we have got this running a bit faster than I should have. I didn't really realise that was how the mechanic works. I won't do that again, but I've already done that, so I'm not undoing it. Because I don't think I can actually remove them anyway. Or can I? No, I can remove them. That's for the future. So now we have two outposts, both working away. Let's move our satellite a bit forward, shall we? So over here, I have 10,000 material over here. I have... Already maxed out 1,500. So yeah, we are going to need some proper resource uh, carriers. The drone ship will act a bit like that, but we need more than that. So that's definitely something we need to build in the very not-so-distant future. Right now, I can just use the Sinner's Outpost to build more darts and everything else. Use the original to build heavier vehicles. Growth is 32 per second. This is 22. Yeah, makes sense. So this one here for lighter craft, this one for heavier craft... Then we just merge them later on. Okay, now we've captured the tile next to this. We can now repair and build normally on the Sinner's Outpost. And we are harvesting faster than this thing can regenerate. So that's perfectly fine. Now capturing this, then we'll attack the airship gantry. So what we're going to need is some of our bombers as soon as possible. So let's build them over here. Let's say two of them, yeah. Two of the bombers and two of the... Sorry, three of the darts should be enough, hopefully. But saying that, if there's an atlas, that's going to be a real pain. We shall see. Or I could build one of my drone ships, the anti-air one. No, let's just build two of the bombers for now. Really, with the drone ships, they do need to be, a, to be accompanied by a larger vehicle, since they can't really sustain themselves. This seems kind of cruel. I'm using the Sinner's Outpost to build a brand new dart. The things which broke its mind, well, it's now going to create them over and over again. It's fun being the parasite. We've captured the territory. Being replenished via the Sinner's Outpost. The bombs are almost ready to go. So I've decided I'm going to be building a new satellite straight away. The reason is the other one can't get high enough, and honestly, it's not the most subtle of things. Seeing all those balloons everywhere, it's just going to tip off the enemy. So, going with something a little bit more subtle. Able to go at about 500 meters into the air. Yeah, I think this will do. As you can see, it's far more effective. The penguins are now joining up with the darts, and our starting fortress is now harvesting as fast as it can. Before, it was allowing the regeneration of the resource zone to be faster than it was harvesting. But now it's at full speed, so we are getting loads and loads of resources. All of our craft currently are very cheap, and in fact, combining all of our aircraft still isn't the same price as a single regular Atlas. But I still think we're going to be fine, so let's Moving out. get them all ready. Moving out. They all have ammo, right? Yes, they do. Moving out. Moving out, moving out. Lifting. In fact, what we should do is make it so the Sinner's Outpost doesn't hold any ammo. There we go. 
all of you into one fleet, and then we attack the neighbors. Well, I just messed up quite badly. Also, the land doesn't appear to be here, which is interesting. But yeah, I messed up because what I'd accidentally done is I'd started the fight without placing them correctly. So we're kind of clumped up, but I think we're going to be okay. There's the land. Okay. <laughs> Still a bit underwater there, but okay. So we have a cram. No, it's advanced cannons. Potentially worrying. Very worrying. We have the atlas. The houses obviously don't do anything. So everyone, including the bombers, please focus on the atlas as soon as possible. I will try and jump on the Atlas, so if we do disable it, I can capture it, because that would be amazing. Now, the Atlas is quite vulnerable to lots of little hits. If we get one on the advanced cannons, we're in good shape. Oh, the bomber is just about missing it. Darn, how about the second shot? Two misses there, but the Atlas, at least, is no longer airborne. Oh, that is worrying. That looks cooler. That's pretty perfect. Hello, Atlas. Oh, please stop focusing on the bombers. They're the more expensive ones. Engaging now. Yes, no, the weapon's still online. As you can see, even with stacked wooden armor, the darts have a lot of trouble getting through. Though it does seem like the guns are offline. Is this true? Okay, I would say we're allowed to capture this now, but we should be focusing on the other gun. And the bomb goes off, destroying most of the top there. Just keep focusing on everything else. So here's the funny thing. I'm actually glad it was focusing on the bombers now I'm thinking about it, because now the jets are right in to the craft itself before they're at the back, but now using their smaller jets, it's actually quite well protected. So all they were really hitting is just a little bit of stacked armor. You didn't drop your bomb then, which is interesting. Why not? Unless you've lost your weapon. Potentially that one's been um, defanged. Declawed. No weapons. Focus on this. Take it down. Yeah, what's happened to our bombers? They are not, you know, dropping the bombs. There you go, that one is. Yeah, the one must have just been um, knocked out. I mean, it was taking a lot of flak damage. It could have easily lost the uh, the weapon on the bottom. Okay, I would say at this point, we're able to capture everything. That's no longer... No, it is still healing. In that case... Engaging now. Oh, lovely placement there, that attack. And that is now dead. So... Everyone stop. Let's uh, capture what's here. I mean, there's no point in not. We have completely disabled it. It's a bit dangerous just letting all of our uh, planes fall from the sky, isn't it? So I just took a look at what had happened, and yeah, it turns out on the one bomber I had lost the gun, I'd lost some of the internal cram, and I'd lost the detection systems on the front. So the flak did actually do quite a lot to it. We just overwhelmed them, though, so everything went pretty well. This takes so long, even with all those points in Stormtrooper. Ah. <laughs> Did we just ram one of the... Well, the Atlas getting a random bit of revenge there by ramming our craft. It's still worth it if we capture the Atlas. It's worth a fortune of resources, though I think this is the smaller, cheaper version, yeah. I think the AI is in here, though I can't see because of this block in the way. The Atlas is ours. So the Atlas managed to successfully destroy a dart 
and a penguin by ramming it without its AI fully functioning. That is... So annoying. Now, the problem is, of course, I can't just leave the planes flying around in the air while I'm doing this, because they're going to be wasting fuel, but ultimately I've lost resource because they got destroyed. Hello there, defense turret. Now, if I recall correctly with you, the AI is, like, right here. Okay, that's not actually the AI, though, is it? It's just the connection pieces. So where is the main AI? Oh, no, it is underneath. Like, down there. Okay. Like underneath that, or? Oh, it's at the very bottom of the stack. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, these two are ours. Now just for the buildings. I was trying to shoot my way out when I could just open the door, because it's under my control. Yep. Is that mug a steam chamber? Yeah, I think it's a steam chamber, then they've used piping. That is a really good use of mimics. I know it's silly and just small. Look at my little hammock over here. Huh, that is really nice. What a cool building. Oh, is that the actual mainframe? Does it have more than one, perhaps? Huh, well, nice and easy to figure out where they were. So these are worth 2,000 each, not really much. We may as well just grab them, since it's quite easy to grab them. Knock, knock. Booze. <clears throat> yes, alcohol. So, where is the AI now? These have been changed drastically since their old versions. Okay, so it's not on the top like the other one, at least not in the same positions. I can't recall at all where they used to be. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I just found it by mistake. It's in the bedroom. Of course the AI is in the bedroom. Designers of these houses, I'm loving it, seriously. Great job. Nope, have at least one more. Probably in all the corners, isn't it? Yeah, there we are. There we go, second house is ours. Again, just 3,000 resource, but it took a moment. What's left? Is it just these two? Nope, there's one more. Gonna stuff the Atlas full of cargo, and then take it back to the Sinner's Outpost. Shouldn't have done that until I got there, but that's fine. Okay, Atlas. Move over there, please. And at the very least, we're going to destroy the houses. They're really cool looking, so yeah, credit to whoever designed these. They look amazing. Loving all the little details. So the Atlas has a decent amount now. Let's go back. Yeah, 44,000 material this thing has. That's going to be all the repairs and more. We could start saving up some of the stuff. Actually, if we scrap the Atlas with that material as well, we can pretty much make the drone leader our advanced cannon craft, which is very deadly. Ooh, this has quite a strong aircraft. So much so, I'm thinking we have to send more darts in if we attack this. We can really send in a proper dart swarm. Okay, so as outpost, I think you need more repair stuff. No, it doesn't. It's just a matter of having no resources left. Okay. Because there's no fuel left. I thought you were making your own fuel. Oh, you probably was, but that's been destroyed, hasn't it? Oh, dear. Yeah, it's over here. Okay, once the Atlas comes back, what we can do is... Put this down again so that we can start making fuel. So, I didn't realise how much we're definitely going to need a cargo hauler. So that's something I'm probably going to make off camera. Uh, maybe I'll make it on camera. It's going to be quite a simple design just to go with us and haul resources. I do want it to be in fights though. I don't like the idea of having a resource carrier 
which just follows along on the map, but we never see it. So we make it, we put all this effort into it, and we never see it again. I want it in fights, it's going to have lots of armor, very light weaponry. That was the original idea for the current drone controller, our advanced cannon craft, our light advanced uh, cannon craft. Well, heavily armored light anyway. But this time I actually mean it, so like maybe one or two small flat guns, maybe some assistance weapons like flares, but that's it. Everything else is just cargo. Okay, we could make some more bombers and stuff now. Moving out. Okay, the Atlas is here. All that resource can now be used. Oh, no, Atlas. Stop healing the Atlas. No, no, no. Stop repairs. Not sure if I want to fully repair this. Though I kind of do. You know what? We may as well. We can always scrap it later. Sure. Repair the Atlas as well. There we are. Way more repair tentacles now on the Sinner's Outpost. But we do need some more fuel, though. So... Let's just pop that back as it was. Just literally copying however it had it set up before. And there we go, now marking fuel. And that'll be spread to all of the craft. We have two bombers, four darts, and an atlas to our name. And we're saving up resources at the original base. We can almost make our first drone ship, but most likely we'll save up for a larger craft and just continue to build things over here. So I think that's a good time to call it. Although it's been quite a short time, we have done quite a lot very quickly. We've taken a resource zone, we've captured an atlas, we've captured a lot of other resources. There's 700 resources in the sea over there, which I'll grab in a second. And we have a small fleet to defend ourselves. Listening. What we should do, though, is continue to expand, grabbing all this territory so we can see what's happening, and we need to make a proper satellite and cargo hauler. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Really happy to see our craft doing their job correctly, although I do think the Penguin Bombers do need some changes, the darts themselves did fantastically. So with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. So if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next video, we're going to be just as aggressive in this video, taking as much territory as possible, since I want to take out all of the Deepwater Guards harvesters and take all of their resource zones. We are going to spread and take everything we can see. Now I have to say, the darts themselves have really proved themselves today, but the penguins a little bit less so. I'm hoping in the future against more suitable targets, they will do a little bit better. But considering how cheap they are, I think they did okay. But well done to the darts. Why exceeding my expectations? Thank you again for watching, have a lovely day, do take care, and goodbye. From the good guys.